In today's Leeds news, Sam Byram's Leeds Gamble, Leeds Women Win, 11 Sports Media Partner with Women's Side, Our Leeds Old Rafinha Money, and Rasmus Christensen plan to return to Leeds. Morning folks, Jay here on the 12th of October, Thursday with your Legion United news. There's a few bits floating around and a couple in the headlines that might raise a couple of question marks and we'll get into that. There's a bit so we're not going to hang around, there's a couple of long bits here so we're going to crack on. Quick public service announcement to go along with today's video. Um, we are. I have written a piece in the Bites Your Leg fanzine which will be available for the Leeds United game against Huddersfield outside the ground but there is a pre-order online for that as well if you want to if you want to get 50% off that that ends today because they're going to print tomorrow so you can check that out the link is in the description and you can see it on screen here now as well Bite Your Legs fanzine a 50% off pre-order um, the details are in the description you can check that out as well we'll start off with the Sam Byram story Leeds Live have ran a piece this morning which is a really interesting piece actually around Sam Byron's return to Leeds and the gamble that he was taking and not just the gamble that Leeds was taking. Sam Byron's return to Leeds during the summer was seen as a big gamble for Leeds, bearing in mind that Sam has only been available for 50% of the available games for the last nine seasons. However, it isn't just and wasn't just a gamble for Leeds. Um, that's what Sam has had to say on this. Byram had signed a, has signed a one-year contract at Leeds, which is pretty much seen as a low-risk move from Leeds United. He's not on a huge amount of money either, but Sam's partner during the summer was pregnant, and he had sold his house in Norwich, but had no guarantees of any club or offers at that time, was taking a huge risk on his next step. Um, he said the connection between Leeds and Daniel Farkett was just too good for him to turn down. Um, on his pre-season, he said there was no guarantees at all. He said he went uh, on to say that there were a few clubs locally interested in the player and a few across the pond uh, and around Europe that were interested in him, but there were no guarantees and he was waiting to hear of what his next stop would be in football. On the back of a couple of bad injury seasons at Norwich, which Sam himself um, referenced, he said his focus on pre-season was very much on getting his fitness levels up to a right level. He said he got a message from Farkett that said, I know you're a free transfer, you know the club, we've worked together, would you come down and train with us? But he said it was clarified, it was only training and nothing more. But he said he enjoyed the environment when he got there and was happy to stay there. And he said that um, when he looked at the risks of a con of being out of contract, not being guar guaranteed anything by Leeds, he said the, the, the option of possibly training with Leeds and impressing people at Leeds and maybe signing for Leeds again... The, the benefits massively outweighed the risks for Sam in that situation. Um, he also said that um, Leeds is a very different club than when he left Leeds and he had taken out a 12-month lease on a house in Leeds without no contract offer from Leeds in this situation. But luckily it worked out for him. The end of it does go on talk about why he left Leeds, when he left Leeds and the situation under Massimo Cellino at that time, which we all know was a mess. Um, it's a very interesting piece. You should go check it out. There's more detail on the... Um, his time at Leeds when Massimo was in charge as well. So you should check that out on Leeds Live as well. It's worth reading. It's a really good piece. Uh, moving on to talk about the Leeds women's team. Uh, they registered a good heavy win yesterday. A 4-1 win at home to FC United of Manchester's goals from Smart, Rossiou, Pizzarello and Smith were enough to give the Leeds women's team a comprehensive 4-1 win, win. Sorry, um, to get them moving again. They've set them a very good season. They've had a really decent season. A couple of little slip-ups here and there, but a pretty strong season. Um, sticking with the Leeds women's team, um, 11 Sports Media have announced a partnership with the women's side. Uh, 11 Sports announced yesterday they will become the official back of training wear partner for the Leeds United women's team. They also confirmed that they are continuing to support businesses in Leeds and West Yorkshire. And their goal is to help Leeds businesses connect with Leeds United's men's team on match days. How they do that, their partners include the crowd-facing LED board on the back of the main um, advertising boards, the mid-tier LED board that you see going on in the stadium, um, and, and what they call 11 stadium TV and smart TV match day stats, which is designed to engage fans on match days. And they say their partnership with the Leeds women's team is designed to elevate the Leeds women's team to the next level, being that 11 are viewed as a global pioneer of the women's game. So another um, nice one for them. Uh, the big story that's floating around, and I wasn't going to do this because I didn't believe anything in this, but it's possibly worth starting talking about a little bit. Um, and that's the Our Legion United owed money for Rafinha because when this story came out over the past couple of days, I didn't believe what I was reading. Um, because when Rafinha left Leeds, we were all led to believe that the money was paid up front due to Barcelona's financial situation and due to the fact that they had several out 
um, outstanding payments with clubs, even in, they still owed money to for Coutinho to Liverpool at that time. Uh, well, a few non-reliable accounts had shared information saying that Leeds were owed 62 million euro from Barcelona still for the sale of Rafinha, and that broke down to 24 million euro in short-term debt and 38 million in long-term debt. Now, I wasn't sure about this. I wanted to check it out. What I'd heard before was that wasn't the case. I did reach out to a couple of journalists to get clarification. Adam Pope from BBC brought my attention to a Spanish newspaper from July that does kind of back up these claims a little bit. The paper is a paper called the Chronicle Global El Español. And they had a piece in July that basically claimed that Rafinha could be sold by Barcelona in order to fill a 200 million euro gap in their books. The main piece they were looking at here was getting Rafinha off their wage bill in order to have more money to spend and to bring that debt that they had down to below 200 million euro. Xavi had been told that he would have Rafinha for this season, despite, you know, on the back of a very strong season last year where he scored 10 goals and had 12 assists and was incredibly impressive by the end of the season. And basically what happened here was they were looking at the Declan Rice situation, the transfer fee that he was sold for as a benchmark for if they could sell Rafinha for that kind of money, it would make a huge, huge dent in that 200 million hole, which would allow them to bring in new players and register new signs. This is a consistent thing with Barcelona over the last couple of years, kicking the financial can down the road a little bit, running out of time every year with it a bit more, but still fighting it. And they claimed that there was still 52 million euro owed to Leeds United for the sale of Rafinha and that was in July of this year so not that long ago and um, they also said that as far as they were concerned Rafinha wouldn't be leaving because Javi didn't want him to leave as it turns out Rafinha didn't leave in the end but they thought that if they could sell Rafinha for in and around the same amount of money as Declan Rice they could pay Leeds back to 52 million that they owed them and then have 50 odd million in the bank to wipe off that 200 million so make a profit on it as well um, it's not being confirmed and I should state this this hasn't been confirmed by anybody credible um, Adam did bring my attention to this article there is nothing locally around this that's, that's, that has said it and it's um, it's an interesting piece to keep an eye on I'll try and get some more detail over the next couple of weeks as well if I can but um, it's a strange one we were led to believe that the Chelsea offer which was more money wasn't accepted because Leeds were getting an upfront payment from Barcelona and Leeds needed that to fund that window they're saying it that the money that's been talked about appears to be just the entire fee still it's very amount, large amount of money I'm assuming it includes clauses and the final story today to wrap up with is the plan for Rasmus Christensen to return to Leeds according to Danish outlet TV2 Sport <laughs> I'm running out of breath here uh, according to Danish outlet TV Sport 2 the plan for Rasmus Christensen is to return to Leeds United at the end of his long Christensen's time at Roma has been very much up and down he has had some assists in some games he's had some decent matches and he's been called out for criticism publicly by Jose Mourinho in one of his uh, public dressing downs that he likes to do on players going as far as to state in one interview that he was upset with the quality of signing that Roma had done over the course of the season not directed straight at him but that was during a game where he'd taken Urente and, and Christensen both off at half time um, it's not been great for him but he has started to work his way back into the team he was excluded from the European squad which would which you know would be a concern for him um, but according to this uh, report in TV2 Sport they are saying that according to the plan that's an in inverted commas there's a plan the £10 million man will return to Leeds United after his loan is done with Roma, there are no buy options or obligations in the contract to buy. So unless Christensen can impress Roma over the next couple of months in order for them to want to buy the player, it looks like he will come back to Leeds in the summer. Um, it'll be an, I would imagine he's coming back to find another club because it'll be tough for most of these players to come back and actually play for Leeds again anyway that's going to be it for me today folks there is a podcast tonight which will be out for members tonight and out for everybody else tomorrow so keep an eye out for that as well um, and then a reminder again that we have done the um, fanzine piece with the Bite Your Leg Media new fanzine that's available next week but there is a pre-order which ends today to get 50% off that I may have written a piece in as well for them as well so if you want to see that you can check it out it will be available for the Huddersfield game and um, if you want to get pre-order on that now you can it's 50% off that but it ends today so you can check that out See you tomorrow.